Welcome back to the bench. I have a video for you today. 12 years ago, I did a video about my favorite power amplifier chip amps. And that was July of 2013. How time flies. You know, when you're a kid, that's like going from first grade to graduation. School seemed to have taken an eternity, but of course now, as you get older, the decades just fly by. But anyhow, yeah, back then I did a video of my favorite power amplifier ICs, and I wanted to kind of update that, see what's been dropped, see what's been added. Now in this video, I'm not going to dwell on each chip a long time. I've made videos, sometimes multiple videos, of each of these amplifier ICs. And if you want to get more information, all of these have been tested on the Quant Asylum Analyzer. See what their performance is. So yeah, I have videos on that. So for now, let's carry on and see what my favorite chip amps are. Okay, we'll start off with these lower power chips, which are good for battery use. The TDA7267 and the 7267A variant. It's really the exact same IC, it's just in a larger package, probably for better thermal design, better thermal dissipation. These chips have been discontinued for many years, but are still widely available. And I love them. I've built a whole lot of amplifiers out of these, including my Lucite Cube amp. I probably built four or five amplifiers I use for various things. One way to tell if it's authentic is they use a heavier pin on these. You can see, if you compare the thickness of the pins compared to like an LM386 or, you know, most other dual inline packages as these, these will be thicker. And they do that because of better thermal design, better heat dissipation. You know, these are tinned copper and, of course, copper being expensive that's the first thing they're going to cheat on is using a thinner material but yeah you should be able to find these readily available these have much better performance in the LM386 especially with 4 ohm loads like at 9 volts when I tested the LM386 the power folded back to only 325 milliwatts well these will do around 1.6 watts so a huge difference in power output and like the LM36, they do not require a lot of support components, so they're quite easy to use. They do have a fixed gain of 32 dB, and the input impedance is about three times higher than the LM386. There's also the TDA7268 variant of this, which is a stereo amplifier. It has two amplifiers in one 16-pin package. Next chip on the list is the TDA-1517. Very easy to use stereo amplifier IC. If you need a little more power than these, you can move up to this. Running at 15 volts, 4 ohms, you can get about 6 watts of power per channel. And doesn't require a lot of parts to make it work. Also comes in a dual inline package where the upper pins are all ground but this they just have the heat sink tab version of it this is of course a single inline type package very decent chip if you want a low to moderate amount of power for a portable speaker or whatever project you have the only thing to be aware of with this IC is its low gain of 20 dB so you just have to make sure you have enough input signal to drive it properly. But other than that, it's um, a decent little chip amp and highly recommended. Next chip on the list is the TDA2050. Those that know me know that that IC is going to be on the list. Excellent little amplifier in a TO220 style case with five pins. Very versatile as I talk about in the videos where I discuss this thing. You can run it over a wide supply of voltages. This thing actually puts out signal running at 3 volts. But of course, to get any decent power, you have to run it at a higher supply, like plus or minus 20 volts or so. Seems to handle 4 ohm loads easily. 
and the distortion performance is what I call excellent. In fact, my jaw hit the floor when I first tested these on the analyzer. I was kind of surprised at how well they perform. The bad news is they were discontinued. However, there's the UTC variant, the TDA-2050L, that's still alive, and you can buy them. I bought a pair, tested them out. Same exact die inside. I mean, I, I haven't decapped them to see, but when you run distortion, step response, stability, and um, how it performs in clipping, you can tell if the amplifier is the same or not using the same die inside and you know it performs exactly the same as the the actual TDA 2050 so yeah it's the, it's the original chip still available and at very good prices so very glad to see that this thing lives on today the next chip on the list is the TDA 7377 I don't have a free one, I only have one on this kit board here. But this chip was designed for the car stereo market. And there's been a whole slew of those types of chips. Many of them are very good. But this is the one I happen to have and I tested it on the Quan Asylum and it tested pretty darn good. So if you're limited to a 12 volt supply and you don't want to resort to a step up inverter type system for more power, you can use one of these chips. This particular chip has four little amplifiers inside of it and two of them are bridged together. So you end up with a stereo amplifier with bridged outputs. And what bridging does is give you more output power. For example, this chip here running at 12 volts, 4 ohm loads, I don't remember the exact numbers, but you probably get 3, 3.5 watts. Whereas this chip, you're going to get more like 12 watts. And if you bump the supply voltage up to, say, 15 volts, you'll get even more power. So that's handy if you want to build a small amplifier that puts out a little more power than something like this can, thanks to its bridged outputs. When I tested this particular chip on the audio analyzer, it performed pretty good. I was actually surprised at how well it did. So that's one reason I put it on the list here. Okay, so now we're getting into the higher power amplifiers where you can get 50 or 60 clean watts out of these and uh, very good distortion performance as well. So the next chip would be the LM3886. Easy to use chip, performed well on the analyzer. If you need more power than any of these previous chips we looked at, this would certainly be one to go for. One limitation you have to watch for though is with 4 ohm loads, you really don't want to go beyond a supply voltage of plus and minus 28 volts. And that leads straight into the next chip, the TDA 7293-94. Pretty similar chips, as I mentioned when I tested these things. The 93 just has some extra pins if you want to parallel them together. Same limitations with 4 ohm loads, don't go over plus or minus 28 volts. As with the LM3886, the TDA 7293 and 94 gave you excellent distortion performance. And they don't require a lot of external components, they're quite easy to use, highly recommended. If you're just going to build a, a simple amplifier, you're not going to bridge them, I would go for the 94 version of this since you don't need the extra functionality, you're going to get the same performance. So there you have it, my favorite chips. So I'm going to cover ones that I removed from the list, ones that I added, and my top favorite of all. But one note I would like to say, why don't I include Class D? Of course, Class D is very popular now. There are very good sounding Class D amplifiers. It just so happens everybody has their preference, and I have mine as well. I, I'm a linear guy. I, I just like linear chips. The main problem with Class D is that it's not DIY friendly. If you want to take a chip and spin your own board, it's difficult to do because those Class D components are surface mount. They're very small. The design of the board is very critical. There's tight loop lengths and isolation because of the uh, 
separation of the switch mode part and the linear parts of the circuit. Very critical design layout with that. You know, surface parts just not DIY friendly. Now these are easy to put into a board. They're through hole components. They're large enough that they're easy to work with. So that's the main reason. Okay, so what chips did I take off my list? From memory, I know I had the TDA2003 on there. It's still a good chip. I just don't use it these days. Long discontinued. And there's other chips that I could use in its place, like this one here. So much more easier to use that. Plus it's, uh, it's stereo in the package here. I dropped the LM1875. Also a very good chip, still in production. The 2050 had better distortion performance and worked better with 4-ohm loads. So, you know, a couple important things to me there. So I just dropped the LM1875. Still, look, like I say, it's still a good chip. A hi-fi performer, but I just think this stands head and shoulders above it. What ICs did I add? Well, I didn't have this chip before the TDA7377 specifically, but I did mention about these bridge stereo amplifiers designed for the automotive industry. And I did add the TDA7293 and 94, because at that time I've never tested one of those. But now that I tested them, I was very happy with them, and I added them to the list. Okay, so what's it going to be? What is my all-time favorite? Well, you know, each chip has a specific purpose. You know, if I'm going to run at 9 volts battery power, you know, you can't really pick these other chips. I'm going to pick these. But I have an all-time favorite here, and people who know me probably already know what it's going to be. And it's going to be the TDA2050. I just love these chips. They have enough power for my needs. Distortion performance was just as good as these so-called hi-fi chips here. I mean, they don't have as much output power, but like I say, the distortion performance was excellent. Just so simple to use and versatile. And I guess I'm going to wrap it up here. Thanks for watching.